So the race is about to get underway. The red lights go up. Peter Baldwin from the front row, but Paul Thompson makes a slightly better start. Comes towards Baldwin. The two cars almost rubbing door mirrors as they head down Paddock Hill Bend. But then Peter Baldwin up through the gears takes the lead. So he leads, and then Paul Thompson's in second. Um, Casey's gone round on Ball Cowan and Deep who's going backwards now because it's down to about fifth or maybe in sixth as they head up the hill now then as they head up towards Drew it's now we can ride on board with Mark Cowan who comes around the outside of Aaron Smith he can't do that with Smith coming around Deep he can't do that either as they head now down towards Grebby Bed for the first time of our gets the leaders through the left hander Peter Baldwin at the front of the pack everybody all as one head through the corner down the keeper straight they go down towards 30s and leading the way it is Peter Baldwin second is Paul Thompson third is Casey fourth position is Dave Drew then in a fifth is that Colin um, yes Colin Peacock runs uh, in a fifth position and the cars head down the rubble track down towards Paddock Hill Bend then for the uh, first time at racing speed onto the brake tour Paddock they will be and here they come into the corner then. Paul Thompson still holding the pressure on the base Baldwin. We've got a group of five going for the lead now. And then it is Deep, I think, that runs ahead of the rest of the pack. If the cars all head down the hill. And now we can roll back on board with Deep. He's in fact not right at the front of the you know, next group of cars. Um, it was in fact the number nine machine of Mark Sims. Everybody made it safely through lap one. Leaders down in towards 30, it's still Bolden trying to make a gap to Thompson as now. Dave Drew under lots of pressure as they head up into Clearway. That's Colin Peacock up behind them, Mark Sims and Aaron Smith. As they all head through Clearways onto the path, they go once again. As they head on to Clark Covenant, across the grass comes Rob Howard. And now is he heading for the pit lane, I wonder? Yes, he is, by the looks of things. So, I think Rob Howard We are first retirement of the race. Into the paddock again then for Peter Baldwin. Heads down Paddock Hill, then up back up the hill, up Howard Hill towards the Druid Turpin. He still leads the way, coming out of retirement um, this year. And still winning races on his first race on his return at Donington Park. As he goes into Graham and Ben Lou for another win here today. Dave Drew gets a big side of the moment, so does Aaron Smith as they head out of Graham Hill Bend down towards um, Surtees. It's Paul Hobson putting the pressure on for the leaders. Dave Drew goes straight on at 30. Across the grass he goes. Uh, the car that was running in, I think, fourth position. Mowing down the grass. And he's dropped right to the back of the field. Now, did he have a problem which caused him to go straight on at 30? Well, at the front there for now. Three for the lead. It's Peter Baldwin, Paul Thompson and Richard Casey. As they head up towards the woods then for another time. Board, uh, with Rupert Deep, he chases after Aaron Smith. As uh, Mark Sims leads his group of cars down towards Graham Hill Bend. He turned into the left hand. And a big side return again from Aaron Smith. The car completely crossed up as he went out the corner. He ran a bit wide as well and all that. So they head down towards uh, um, 30. They're side by side in front as well as Tony LeMay tries to come past Mark Sims. That's the battle, I think, for something like fifth position as they head into clear ways. Tony LeMay putting the pressure on. And Aaron Smith runs wide. Has he got a problem? Because um, a few mistakes now within the last few laps. Um, Dave Drew retired, and I think Aaron Smith is going to be the next one. So we've had three retirements in the first three laps of the race. On to lap four for Peter Baldwin. Tony LeMay still ahead of Mark Sims. Trying to pull away from the rest of the pack. Side by side there. That for trying to gain a fight. Right, round the outside for Mark Cowan as he tries to gain a position at the Druid's Herford. He can't quite do that. Chris Watkinson um, is the person he's trying to find a way through as he turns into Grenfell Bend now then. Watkinson quick through the corner. Turn away then as they head down the uh, Cooper Strait. Baldwin gets a gap now to Paul Thompson. Now closed in on the top three has the car of Colin Peacock going really well. And up on the inside of Mark Sims now goes up the 15 car of Gordon Pocock so that's another place lost for Mark Sims as he's dropping now down the order the field head through Clark Curb now but down pad kill for Peter Baldwin still with that gap to Paul Thompson then um, KC in third and Peacock in fourth then fifth is Tony LeMay away himself Mark Sims has lost another position by the looks of things they head up the hill and um, or he got it back again by the, uh, or no he's about to lose another position is he yes Rupert Deep so 
Nick and Dave, the cards go side by side, Sim still just about standing in front of Dave. This is a battle for seventh position as they head down the Cooper straight now then. There's Peter Baldwin into McLaren, the top four are all still together. Then Tony LeMay there in the fifth position, and then Sims has a huge queue of cars behind him for seventh. There's one, two, three, four, five, about eight cars I reckon in that. Battle for seventh position as they head now out of clearways onto Clark Curve. It's still Buck Sims that leads the way in this battle from Deef. Then Kane Aston, one of the top drivers in Mini Mega Racing, involved in that after a problem yesterday in qualifying. So Sims still leading. Um, and Aston then got a good run up down the hill. Now he looks up on the inside of Rupert Deef as they head up the hill towards Stuart Herb and Deef defend that line. And trying to tap Mark Sims at the same time. Can Kane Aston come right round the outside here? I think he. Can't quite. Now, now here comes Deep. He's going to try and attack Sims for seventh. He can't do that. Sims late on the brakes for Graham Hill. But now they head on to the Cooper Australia. Then they stay in that same order. Mark Sims in seventh. Eight for Deep. Night for Aston. As they head now in, uh, the lead is heading to Certis McLaren. Then we wait for that battle for seventh. And it's still Sims sitting there. Kane Aston still putting the test on for Deep. And then Mark Cowan there um, in about 11th position, I think. One of our board cameras. He's still following Watkinson. Then right behind him is a number 16 car. That is uh, Lee Jones. As they head now onto Clark Curve and onto the Bum Street to complete yet another lap of this 20 minute race. The number 10 car into retirement, so we've got another car off and out, and that's Phil Harvey. Leaders down through Paddock Hill Band. They stay in the same order as Sims still got deep behind him, and then Kane Aston as well as they head up the hill. Stays the same order as it is at the moment. Back on board with Mark Cowan then as he tries to see if he can find a way past what didn't got that time. Now, what can Rupert Deep do about Mark Sims this time? He can't do anything into Graham Hill then, so they all turn around for this battle for seventh position. It's on to the Cooper straight for another time then. Still with Mark Sims at the front of it, and now we're here. Kane Aston under pressure for Watkins the best. <laughs> Defence are line just about stays in front. Um, side by side behind Cowan as well. Deep there, still ahead of Aston. To Clark Curve they go once again. And Mark Sims still just about keeping Rupert Deef behind him. Rupert Deef back with, uh, with the front lock in the first race as Phil Harvey's car gets pushed down the hill into a place of safety and leaders into Paddock Hill Bandit. So Peter Boulder's made a gap now to Paul Thompson and then Casey and Pate Cook still there as well. And then here's about a percentage. Sim is still with Deef behind. Um, no, looks like Sim has just gone ahead of Rupert Deef now, I reckon, as they head up the hill with Gordon Mark Cowan. He's attacking Chris Watkinson. But yes, Rupert Deef up to 7th and 8th is Sim. 9th is Aston. 10th is Watkinson. 11th is Arnold Mark, um, uh, uh, Mark Cowan now up on the inside of Deef. Guys, Kane Aston, he can't do that as they turn through and out the corner now. Then down the Cooper straight they go. The Mark Sims under lots of pressure now for a multiple race winner of a minute. Miglas, Kane Aston. As they head down towards Surtees now that Rupert Deep already getting away from Sims. And Kane Aston slowing. Kane Aston with a problem. The car uh, has had problems all weekend and it looks like it's reoccurring once again today. So that means that the battle, what not, I think it's 9th is what I could say. 10th is Coward. 11th is Jones as they head onto the Brabham Street once again. And Kane Aston is out of the race. As a battle for seconds on Paul Thompson under lots of pressure on Richard Casey. This is all allowing Peter Baldwin to get away the race leader. Meanwhile, up the hill for Rupert Deep. He's now on the attack of the car in front of him. That is the car. And um. Check for that in a second. He could lead us through clearways once again. Still Peter Baldwin at the front of the pack then. Going well. It's Gordon Pocock who um, Rupert Deep was chasing after. So they head now, and Deep's already got past him. They're trying to come back at him. It's Pocock can't do that. Those up to six now for Rupert Deep. Mark Cowan's still done lots of pressure. He defends to uh, Lee Jones as they head up the hill on board. We can go with Mark Cowan then as he gets onto the brakes for the Druid Serpent. We're approaching a half distance in this race. 20 minute race here at the Mini Festival for all the Mini Migglers. They got 22 laps in this morning, so we're expecting to do the same. Paul Thompson won that race to Peter Baldwin and Richard Casey. Rupert Deef in that one have finished in fourth. That was the leading group of cars. Once again, we got four, but with different people at the 
front of the battles. So, Mark Cowan now has got three cars following me very closely into clear waves and side by side behind us. I think that bird's trying to gain position. Meanwhile, in front of them, they're battling it out as well. Bird's losing time, I think, riding round the outside line. So, Peter Baldwin starting to come under pressure once again by from Paul Smith as they head down Paddock Hill. Colonel May having a lonely base in fifth. D starting to get away from Cocock. Then the battle for eighth position. Mark Sims with Chris Watkinson right behind him. Then the battle for tenth with Mark Cowan with Jones right behind him as they head up the hill. Now, what can D do about LeMay? Because he's chasing after him. LeMay running in fifth. Deef running in sixth as they head out of uh, um, Graham Hill Bend. 19 cars running in this race still after a few retirements. So, leaders through, gone, really gone through 30s, and side by side, now Watkinson gets ahead of Sims, so that's a change I think for, uh, is it something like 8th position, as their birds try to come past Jones, Jones in turn has lost a position to uh, Greg Carina. As they head through Clark Curve, leaders through Pat, I guess Paul Thompson puts the pressure on to Peter Baldwin as they head up the hill, the two leaders absolutely together. And then a battle for 850. Watkinson now ahead of Sims. Now Cowan trying to close after them. Uh, we can ride on board with Cowan then as he chases after Mark Sims. The person's been going backwards. He was in about fourth or fifth after lap one. He's now back in about ninth or so. As they head through Graham Hill Bend. Now, what can Mark Cowan do about him as they head down towards Surtees then? On the fastest corners. The Brands Hatch Indy circuit through um, 30s, then through Clown, then onto the brakes for clearways, the right hand up, and then the car, uh, track turns into uh, Clark Curve, flat out through here, and then onto into the slipstream. We go huck, um, tucked up against the pit wall, and then bring it out back onto the um, racing line for Paddock Hill Band. Bit of a tighter line for Cowan than for Sims. Then up the hill we go towards the Druid Turpin. And then onto the brakes. And Cowan dives to the inside of Mark Sims. He can't quite make that one work. Meanwhile, in front, Watkinson's closed in on Pocock as they head down towards Graham Hill Bend. Leaders, though, through Surtees. It's Baldwin still that leads. Paul Thompson's in second as we head into Clearways. Just over seven minutes to go. Third, there's still Casey, and here's this battle Cowan under pressure now from Karina as they both, uh, the Sims I think, start to slightly get away. It's a battle, a big side went over Paul Smith, and Paul Thompson even, he just about holds on to it, but trying to come through now, I think at the second will come Richard Casey. Thompson attacking Bolden for the lead, that the car got a bit out of shape through the corner, and Karina's got past uh, Cowan. And into Graham Hill Bend. So you can see Boulder with that lead now. Thompson, I think, lost a place to Peacock. But then he dived up on the inside for Graham Hill Bend. Make the position, uh, make the um, gain work. And gained the position. Now, it's, uh, it's well up on two wheels for Watkinson for Graham Hill Bend. Then we've got a battle on for fifth as well. So we're watching that one as Thompson under lots of pressure there from Peacock. But you managed holding on. Yes, Tola May under pressure now from Rupert Deep, who's having a good race once he managed to clear this massive battle for seventh back. Um, a behind that battle, we got a couple of cars. Um, back in here, Philip Andre and Paul Simmons. There's Andre, that's the head of Simmons. But Baldwin with that lead from Casey, then Thompson and Peacock going. Tony May still under pressure. Tony May still under pressure from Rupert Deef. Um, on board with Deef then, as he really puts the pressure on to Tony LeMay, down the hill, down towards Graham Hill, Ben then, just about staying in front at the moment, is Tony LeMay, he runs a bit wide, now, Deef trying to find a way through into Surtees, he won't be able to do it this time, I doubt, as Paul Thompson there in second, uh, third position, still really putting the pressure on, and what about in that battle for fifth then, LeMay staying in front of Deef, there's Watkinson and Pocock. As Cowan gets back ahead of Karina, I think, there. As Thompson's got into second into Paddock. He's got ahead of Richard Casey once more. And uh, 
Still in seventh. There is uh, Rockwood Centers. Calvin attacks Mark Sims. It runs out wide. So he goes through there. And Jones is going to follow him through. And uh, on board with Karen then into Druids. Uh, so Karina's still in front of him, I think. Then it's Sims behind. Looking in the mirror. Sims going side by side, I think, down towards Graham Hill. Ben Leaders back into clearway. Zed never lapped a car. That is Robert Morris. Tola May under lots of pressure from D. Who dived up on the inside there into Surtees. Then we've got. Watkinson leading next card. Then Mark Cowan leading this forecast card. Mark Sims is just behind him. So they turn into clearways. And onto Clark Curve. Cars will be looking for the slipstream there. Under five minutes to go. Paul Thompson still just ahead of Casey as they turn into Paddock. And uh, there's a battle for fifth. LeMay still just about holding off Deef. Tried to get a good run off the corner. Uh, battle of attempt for the Mark Cowan. That's the head of Mark Sims. And uh, there's um, o Andre and Simmons still battling it out for uh, 14th. Peter Baldwin into Cersei's zone. Head of Thompson. Then Casey. And uh, Peacock. And LeMay, under pressure of Deef, who dies up on the inside for clearways. He should be able to make this work. Both cars go very wide through the corner. Cars side by side now. They will be all the way down towards Paddock Hill Bend. The two cars level to go down the straight. Leaders have broken to pairs. Baldwin and Thompson battling for the lead. And Deef on the inside line for Paddock. Makes it hard work. He's up to fifth. And turn LeMay tries to fight back up the hill, though. I think Deef should just about defend that off. Sims back on the inside of Mark Cowan. So they change position as once more. So they head up the hill. Cowan fighting back again. Up on the inside, almost on the grass. Sims just about defends the line. As they turn through with about three minutes of the race to go. Not long to go out at all in this one. Can Mark Sims hold on to the, his position? As they go through Graham Hill End. Power goes on down the straight towards 30s. They go. And Deef still under pressure from Tony LeMay. Next battle for fifth. Deef runs out wide. That's alone with LeMay. Up on the inside as they go onto Clark Curve. And uh, looks like LeMay, as they head down a paddock, should get the position back. Still, they're in pairs for the lead. And uh, LeMay, yes, he did get back out of Deef. So he runs in fifth once more. Um... Cowan's um, still chasing after Sims. And you've got Jones and Burge in that as well. More Lapry to be dealt with for Heather Baldwin. Will this hold him up? Because Paul Thompson is there to pounce if Bold Bold and Peter Baldwin makes any mistake as they go up on the inside of the next bat marker. And they've got one more to do as they head down towards Paddock then. So Baldwin still leads from Thompson. Then it's Sims still leading this gaggle of cars. Cowan right behind him. Then Jones as they head into clearways. Leaders free paddock then with the next car to be lapped. Still Baldwin leading the way then. Remember LeMay just ahead of Deef with a car, uh, maybe, yes, two laps possibly, maybe one. As into paddock, two cars off. That's Mark Cowan and Mark Sims hits the tyre wall very hard. So that'll be both those cars out the race. Hopefully both cars are okay. Yellow flags now into paddock. There'll be no passing there to the end of the race. Leaders then in the clear ways. Paul Thompson is going to make this work. He's going to have to do it somewhere that isn't paddock. But I think there's one lap to go when they cross the line. So what can Paul Thompson do about the race leader, Peter Baldwin? Well, there's a couple of mini car lengths between the two leaders. And into paddock they come, then past the stricken vehicles. And I don't think Paul Thompson's going to be close enough to challenge anywhere on this final lap of the race. LeMay looks like he may just about have a kick enough to gap to Deef to hold on to his fifth position. This back has all been spread out. Let's see what happens. Donald Ford, Mark Cowan, he went to the outside of Mark Sims to head down to paddock. And it seems to cut across the front of Cowan's car. Both of the cars headed into the tire wall. 
see now how hard Moxham's hit the power of the car, launches up in the air. And then, in the with Mark Cowan, the car just making contact into the corner. Both cars rushed into the tyre wall, but final time, Peter Baldwin, it looks like he's heading towards another victory in Mini Miglers. Number 33 car, Paul Thompson, looks like he won't be able to quite do anything about the uh, multiple time champion. Peter Baldwin then will take another victory in Mini Miglers. He won by just over a quarter of a second to Paul Thompson. Third was Richard Casey, fourth Colin Peacock, one half second separating the top four. Fifth was Tony LeMay, he just beat Rupert D. Seventh in the end was Chris Watkinson.